thank you, Mark. Um, I'm obsessed with the black box. I'm fascinated by the mysterious power of the black boxes, and I'm even a bit seduced by, the, by, by its power. Um, I will take you on a short journey um, uh, through the history of the black boxes and uh, also elaborate a little bit about the impact of the black box on our daily life, society, culture, and so on. Uh, begin with just a very simple explanation of the black box theory. Uh, it's a phenomenon that deals with the notion of the unknown. We don't know what's in the black box, but if we know what's the input and what's the output, if we can analyze the input and output, we can uh, guess or at least speculate about how the black box works, what it actually does. And to give you a simple example, now if 5 and 4 is the input and the 20 is the output, then the answer is quite obvious. But it is less obvious with other black boxes. Uh, I'm an interaction designer, so I have these computer chips here, they're all around us today. And they, of course, all have a very specific function. But what's really interesting today is that they are also uniting and they interact, they're connected with each other and form like larger complex entities of black boxes, in this case, a smartphone or so. And that happens not only in hardware, but also in software. Anybody familiar with programming, especially object-oriented programming, realizes that today we don't write a piece of code entirely from scratch, like from A to Z. No, we, 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 when, when a programmer does, uh, writes a piece of software, he also refers to uh, so-called snippets of code or libraries on, on, on the basis of which the, well, the, the bigger picture comes, uh, comes alive. Uh, so the black boxes are never empty, now they contain other little black boxes in them. And even these little black boxes often contain other small, you know, smaller black boxes. It's a, it's a modular system like the Russian Matryoshka, you know, only much more complex. Now, speaking of complexity, the human brain, it's also a kind of black box. Now, I'm talking to you, so this is my output, right? And you, uh, you know, there's an input coming into, into your brains. It's very mysterious to me what happens, whether you really understand me or whether you get the message. I don't know that. It's mysterious to me. It's hidden. And despite uh, all kind of discoveries in uh, neuroscience, psychology, and so forth, uh, we still don't know, do not know everything. That's quite obvious. But we also know that there are certain parts of the brain activated. So we also have like little black boxes inside of the bigger uh, black box, which uh, are activated depending on the function that is requested. Uh, but what fascinates me the most in, well, this big topic, the human brain, is the ability to create other kind of black boxes. So we invent things to, in a way, enhance our capabilities of perception, our, our capability of, of of doing thinking processes. So in, so in that case, a photo camera. It is, of course, a great artistic tool, but also on its, in its very essence, uh, a, a device that uh, helps us memorize things or remember moments in time and space. Uh, same goes to the uh, film camera, which uh, captures moving images. And here I have a short fragment of a movie by Giga Vertov, a Soviet avant-garde filmmaker, the man with the movie camera from 1929. Uh, the, the movie ends with this integration of the camera lens and a human eye. Today, we are all born, we were all born in a visual culture. We think as the camera, right? We, we, even if we don't interact with it uh, on the spot, we can we, you, you all have that feeling when you don't, have a, you don't have a photo or video camera with you, but you think, oh yeah, that could be a nice picture. Right? We all think with the black boxes, the, even if we don't have them uh, right on the spot in our hands. That happens also with musical instruments. Uh, once you master a very complex input, well, 88 keys, uh, in, with, you know, with sweat and tears, at some point you achieve uh, yeah, of course, beautiful output. It's one of my favorite black boxes um, because it's, it, you can touch all kinds of emotions from very dramatic ones to light ones at the breakfast uh, in a hotel lounge. Um, and, but what's really interesting, I had some, some composers here like Prokofiev or Shostakovich was 
great about these genius uh, uh, musicians is that they were also able to, in fact, compose music without actually playing the piano. So, for instance, Shostakovich would just, wrote, would just write things down on uh, the musical score and then play it afterwards. So you could, again, think with that, that sort of that, like if the piano was in your head already after mastering for quite long. But let's move to the present times, and I will talk a little bit about the hero of our contemporary technology, unfortunately not with us anymore. Steve Jobs, now you have this interesting picture here, the end of the Cold War. There is an ex-Russian president standing next to the American inventor, showing him the way into the future through the black box. So this is the new tool that's going to change the life of people around the world. Let's look together, together into that future, even if, well, it sometimes gives us some troubles, even to the, yeah, well, where was that button really, you know? Like, oh yeah, I found it, right? I found the button. Now, look at the, almost a, at the spectacular shows that Steve used to, used to have um, uh, on the stage big screen behind him and this large black, I would say eye box, I should say, this big eye box and this finger pointing at it, like if it was God's finger. This is the future. Follow it. And this religious association I have here, it's confirmed by also, if you look how Steve Jobs was dressed, almost like a priest, like, like, like a monk, like a prophet, again, with this eye box in his hand. And this is what all was happening in times where his health was decaying, so it's also a very, a very strange mixture of, uh, well, life and death, or, 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 or uh, yeah, still like telling you this is about your future, I'm not going to be with you anymore, but my eye boxes will survive and they will change your future. He still have this Mm, this, uh, 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 this ability to, to put it that way, I would say. And also, if you look at the early advertisements of Apple, um, it's like if Steve was Eve and you were Adam, and, right? Think different. Take the Apple. <laughs> what happens afterwards, we don't really know. We are still learning. We all know that, how much we, we don't really know what these eye boxes bring to our life. We, we are learning as we go. Maybe we just left heaven. We don't know that. And speaking of religion, the black boxes, the mobile devices, I would say, of the Orthodox Jewish uh, communities. Uh, this black box is called a tefillin. And that usually two, there are two black boxes, one you put on your forehead and one on your left arm. The Orthodox Jews use uh, this device, this black box, in order to intensify the prayers or, uh, let's say, establish a better connection with the transcendental. Uh, this is how it looks like mounted on, uh, on, your, on your body. Another picture. Uh. And I went especially to New York, to, to Brooklyn, to, to, to learn more about it. So this is the manufacturing process of the black boxes. They're made of kosher uh, animal skin. So it's a very traditional uh, way of making them. And there is a lid, because they're not, they are, they are empty inside. Well, they're not, actually not empty, because what goes inside are tiny fragments of Torah on little uh, scrolls of paper. Uh, uh, written with a bird's feather, and, and that, I think about four of them that go inside of the box, so this is how it looks when you, when you uh, inject this piece of software, I would call it this interaction designer, you see a piece of hardware and a piece of software, words of wisdom, the code which drives this specific device. And let's go to another religion. What a surprise, the black box again. In fact, a black stone which is mounted uh, on the corner of Kaaba. This is Kaaba in Mecca and Saudi Arabia. And um, look at this, this pattern. The, the large quantity, as if, you know, uh, 
like if the, the whole world would, would sort of gather there. And it, it, in fact, that's how it works. It's like a, like a magnet with some kind of mysterious power which sucks the energy from the whole planet. And in fact, in the Muslim, uh, in, in, in the religion, it is considered as to be, as a place to be, a, as a place uh, in the center of the world. All, even if you don't, I think a Muslim have to get there at least one time in their, in their lifetime. Uh, but if they don't, they still do the prayers towards, towards the Mecca. Uh, I was looking for a Christian Catholic black box, and of course we have the confessional. As soon as the priest gets inside of the black box, suddenly it gets more important or more, like I say, transcendental. And of course we have a lot of many other black boxes. I'm collecting different black box concepts. So of, of course we have the one that you are familiar with or that brings it the, the, the essential association here. So the flight recorders, there are usually three of them in an airplane. And so we de again, we'll, we again deal with this concept of life and death. Yeah, the plane crashes, there's nothing left. The only thing left is the evidence inside of the black box. We can find out what happened, but also it's really interesting on an ethical level with, the, with these types of black boxes. We can also learn from these black boxes in order to improve the safety of aviation later on. So I put very different things with each other. I have also the Pandora's box, you know, the source of our evil. I have the Schrodinger's cat in a box. All scientists will recognize the uh, experiment in quantum theory and so on and so on. The, 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 Elections. Oh, that's a fantastic black box. Very simple input, you know, just one vote, but the output, you never know, especially in the Netherlands. Especially in the Netherlands. So what's the conclusion? Yeah, I juxtapose very different things uh, next to each other, completely different from different fields of science, of cultural studies, of social studies, of technology, and so forth and so forth. I think the main message here is um, we are all scientists, innovators, designers, educators, we often say to our students, for instance, yeah, let, let's think outside of the box. And also, this TED event is an is outside of the box kind of event. But we have to keep in mind that a lot of things that we sort of drive the society and culture forward or backward is happening through the black boxes. And we just simply need to embrace the tradition and be able to work with it on all kinds of levels. Thank you very much.